Okay, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started because you may be the only student that's showing up tonight. <laughs> um, and we're going to go through the sessions last about a half hour. Okay. And so you're probably aware by now how you can access these live sessions by going to the dashboard, right? Yeah. Okay. So I do a session every other Tuesday at okay. um, 5.30 p.m. Pacific time. And um, it'll be on. Which is 8.30 my time. Okay. Uh, so, yeah. So if you're, if you're available, um, love to have you show up every couple weeks. And okay. I believe you can access other health classes too. Rachel, is that correct? Correct. So any teacher hosting it um, that's health or fitness, you are welcome to attend. All right. So have you ever seen a reviews puzzle before, Shirley? A who, how, what puzzle? The reviews on the screen right here. No, I have not. So they're basically, they're, um, they're pictures that represent phrases. And Rachel has found the answers. I'll tell you the bottom left one right here is a sideshow. The bottom right is tickled pink. So we've got to try to solve these two up here above. Shirley, you're making me feel better. I couldn't figure them out either. <laughs> I honestly have no clue. <laughs> like, okay, so uh, I'll let me help you then. So this one right here, I don't think it's very straightforward, but the answer to this stick one is wrong end of the stick X for whatever reason okay uh and then this one here is a cut above the rest if you've ever heard that term a cut above the rest yeah okay. so that's this one right here hello miss gibson how are you Romel, is that your name? Hello? I don't think she can hear me. All right, so let's go ahead and get through this uh, presentation here. So last week I uh, did a presentation, or two weeks ago, I did a presentation on calculating target heart rate which in semester one fitness, it is assignment 5.2.1. So I've got a question here of um, calculating target heart rate zone. Um, this is the protocol of how to do that. So to find your target heart rate zone, you need to subtract your age from 220, and that gives you your max heart rate. And then to find your target heart rate zone, you're going to take that number and multiply it by 0.65. And then you're going to take the max heart rate and multiply it by 0.8. <coughs> and then that will give you what your target heart rate zone is. And this is called the threshold, the lower end of your target heart rate. So basically when we talk about target heart rate, it's where your heart rate should be when you're exercising to get the most benefits for your whatever training program that you're in. So when we talk about the threshold, it means that's the minimum that you need to get your heart rate up to and try to maintain. And then we talk about the target ceiling that we do not want our heart rate to get above that number um, to get the most benefits out of the training program that we're, that we're in. So down below, I did, gave a little example of a student were 16 years old, how you would do that. So if somebody were 16 years old, by subtracting their age from 220, you would get a maximum heart rate of 204. So basically what that says is that a person's um, heart should beat, uh, that's 16 years old, shouldn't be able to beat more than 204 times. And to be honest with you, I've been teaching for 25 years. I still don't know why they came up with this number 220. Um, but it is a number that we use in a formula. Uh, to calculate the threshold, we take the max heart rate. So we take that 204, multiply it by 0.65 to give me my threshold or my lower level of my target heart rate to 132.6. And then to find the upper or the target ceiling, the upper limit, we take the max heart rate times 0.90, that gives us 183. 
So my target heart rate zone is 132.6 to 183.6. So what I have noticed students that are doing this assignment is they get to the fifth question and the fifth question is basically asking for this information right here, this 132, whoops, the 132 to 183. It's a confusing question on the assignment, but basically when you get to that assignment, if you haven't got there already, that's what you're doing is just the last question is just asking you to put what is your heart rate zone. So you're gonna put those numbers in there. Any questions about target heart rate? Shirley, you probably, you just started, right? Yeah. Okay, so you haven't gotten to the, are you in semester one? Do you know what section you're in? You just started. Um, yeah, semester one, I just started. The class was just given to me yesterday. Okay, so when you get into unit five, that's when you'll see this assignment on target heart rate. Okay. All right. Anybody seen uh, this young man before or heard his speeches, kid president? Um, no, I've not. This, this kid's pretty, um, pretty uh, insightful. Um, I, I teach at a brick and mortar high school also. I teach health and physical education and I was putting together my first day um, syllabus presentation for tomorrow and I have this embedded every every semester I start my semester out with this it's just an encouraging it's called the pep talk so I'm going to go ahead and play this for you I just he's cute and I think he gives a good message here so hopefully that you can all hear I'm this be all in pep talk. <laughs> Stop being boring. Yeah, you. Boring is easy. Everybody can be boring, but you're good at that. Life is not a game, people. Life isn't a cereal either. Yeah, it is a cereal. And if life is a game, are we on the same team? I mean, really, right? I'm on your team. You're a bike team. This is life, people. You got air coming through your nose. It's a heartbeat. At least it's time to do something. A poem. Two roads diverged in the woods, and I took the yellow west traveled. And it hurt, man! You were dead. Rocks, boards, and glass. The fire smoke. Ah, not cool, Robert Frost. But one thing really works too bad. I don't want to be in the room that leads to awesome. But that dude really said, don't stop believing. Yes, he drinks you should get a better game. I think that's how it goes. Get a better game and keep going. Keep going, keep going, and keep going. Go back to Jordan and have quit. Well, he did quit. No, he retired. Yeah, exactly. He retired. But before that, in high school, what if he quit when he didn't make the team? You were never made Space Jam. You were never made Space Jam. What will be your Space Jam? What will you create when make the world awesome? Nothing if you keep sitting there. That's why I'm talking to you today. This is your time. This is my time. It's our time. We can make every day better for each other. If we're all on the same team, we'll start acting like it. We got work to do. We can count on it or we can dance about it. We were made to be awesome. Let's get out there. I don't know everything. I'm just a kid. So I'm doing all this. What did I do? Forget the world that isn't your face. Get to it. You just did pet talk. Create something that will make the world awesome. So, um, have any of, you, any of you ever seen this young man? I kind of asked that question at first, but um, is that something new? He has many different videos that he's done, uh, the kid president, and it's just very inspiring. And um, I just always find it uh, kind of, it's uplifting and especially at my brick and mortar, starting a new school year, kids are new and such. It's just a great way to kind of set the tone for a good school year. And so is there anything that kind of resonated from you as you watched that, that a message that can help us all, something that he said, you can either 
use your mic or put it in the chat box. Anything that resonated from that that was you like? Yeah. Um, for me, it was his, you know, basically we're all on the same team, so we need to work together. Um, if we don't work together, we can't help anybody. So if somebody is struggling, then maybe there's something that somebody else understands that they can better explain to somebody else. Great. Yeah, I like that. Especially in this day and age in our political realm, there's a lot of dissension, a lot of differing opinions and such, and there's tension in the media and people, violence. And so it just seems like there's uh, a big division going on. And it's like, I agree, we need to come together, help one another, listen to people. Um, one thing I've learned in my years of teaching is really getting to know people and their stories. I think we all have a story that explains, you know, tells who we are and, and you don't know what a person's story is until you ask them and you have that communication. Uh, so it kind of starts, it starts the communication is what I found. It's um, kind of reaching out to people when they need it or just being a listening ear when, when they may need it. All right. So the main gist of uh, today's lesson is uh, talking about a goal setting assignment that you'll have uh, in the Fitness for Life um, class, and it is built around the acronym of SMART, which are SMART goals. And so before you can actually set goals, you kind of have to have a plan in place. And what do you want to set a goal for? I mean, we can set goals for anything, basically. And using the acronym here of SMART, you want to make a goal that's specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. And um, so you analyze kind of what are your needs and then you prioritize based on that. Okay, what do I want to focus on? Then there's the part of making a commitment. You want to make sure when you set goals that they're measurable. Then you have to have a stepping process. What, what are the steps that you're going to take to reach your goal? Having timelines to keep you on track. And then it's always nice when we set goals to um, create a, uh, some kind of a reward at the end, something to look forward to uh, if you meet your goal. So there's this is a little uh, activity that you can do um, for individuals if they're having difficulty deciding what do they want to uh, make a goal about. Um, so this one right here, you could use um, basically your ranking, uh, some of these things that people have chosen as setting goals for. So in peer appearance and increased muscle tone possibly, or just a better overall health, or you wanna reduce stress in your life. Um, you'd like a better feeling of well being. Maybe for some people it's improving their athletic ability or sleeping better. I would say that would be one of my um, goals is I don't sleep very well. Um, weight loss or weight gain. Uh, you wanna increase your cardiovascular endurance, being able to lift more weight possibly or other. So creating a list kind of like this, this is that analyzing piece that when we set goals that you want to kind of list, what are the things, what are the things I could focus on? And then you're going to rank them in the importance and then focus on what is it really that, you know, pick one thing at a time. It's having many things, many irons in the fire at one time can be difficult when you're trying to focus on many goals. So start simple, pick one goal. Um, and kind of move from there. So here's, here's kind of an example. For instance, if somebody wanted to increase their flexibility um, is kind of going through the process right here. So the first thing is you, you analyze that. You, you realize I'm not very coordinated or flexible. You need to improve your muscular strength and endurance. So you're analyzing, you're realizing that, uh, you know what, I, my flexibility is not where it should be. So then prioritizing, I'd really like to become more flexible, improve my muscular strength and endurance, and learn a new skill like yoga. So I'm going to kind of identify what is it I'm going to do to help work on my flexibility. Shirley, have you ever done yoga before? Yeah. Did you like it? <laughs> um... It wasn't bad. Um, 
I was kind of asked not to come back. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was, I mean, it wasn't bad. Yeah. I tried, um, last spring, I tried doing a hot yoga. And I went for about two or three months. And the room was 104 degrees. So you walked out of there just dripping wet. Oh, wow. But what I liked about it is that I felt like I was getting a workout because I was sweating even though it was mainly from the heat in there. But I also felt that doing yoga in heat, your muscles were a little more elastic. I mean, you could stretch a little bit better in there. So it was interesting, but I really enjoyed the, just the re relaxation piece and the breathing that they taught and such. And I was a fan, but I moved, so I'm further away from the studio, so I don't go anymore. Okay, uh, make it measurable. So I'm going to be able to comfortably do at least 15 yoga positions without modification. So I've chosen to do yoga to improve my, my flexibility according to this example. And then you're going to list the steps. I'm going to attend yoga class two times a week, stretch and practice the moves at home. So you're going to what, outline what are the steps to reach my goal. Make a, uh, a timeline. So identify when are you going to... Um, when are you going to do these activities? How long are you going to do them for? What's your goal for that? And then create uh, some reward for after you're finished with your program. So if I accomplish my goal, I will treat myself to a new relaxing CD that I can use to practice more yoga. But in this day and age, we probably wouldn't use a CD. We just find an app on our phones, right? You don't see CDs very right Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there's just one little way of going through a uh, creating a smart goal specific measurable attainable realistic and has a timeline so uh, another thing about before people work out so how hard should i start out exercising so as stated here only you know the answer to the question how hard and how often how long you exercise when starting depends on your current level so these are kind of some guidelines for people that are starting new workout programs. So as stated, the first one, I, I'm inactive. So for somebody that sits most of the day, uh, they avoid kind of extra exertion, always opt for the elevator instead of the stairs, prefer to ride in the car instead of walk, even when it's only a short distance, would be somebody that's inactive, somewhat active, participate in regular uh, exercise program, Somebody that's active, they maybe have a daily routine involves mild physical activity or very active, they're always on the move. Daily routine involves mild physical activity, participate in just phys additional physical activity. So one thing before going into a program is many people will start a program and this happens oftentimes after New Year's when people make the New Year's resolution that they're going to exercise and then they hit the gym really hard they go hard for that first month and then come February rolls around and they're no longer in the gym because they burn themselves out. So it's important to know yourself and what kind of where you fit in this um, paradigm and then do enough research to figure out, OK, if I'm an inactive individual and I want to start out, you want to start out slow and ease your way into maybe exercising once or twice a week and then increasing it as you go. So that's important and that'll help when you're setting goals to be able to reach your goals too, is knowing um, where you are in terms of your physical condition. So some tips for helping people get started with a new exercise program. Um, here are some good getting started tips is some people find it's enjoyable to exercise with a friend, try to make it fun. Hydration is very important. Uh, I have a friend of mine who just did this, uh, she did a hike where they'd go up this mountain. Um, it was like for, um, it was timed. And they had, to, they had to hike up this mountain and then they took a gondola down and they just kept doing it over and over again. And it was, it was a fundraiser for something. But she posted on Facebook this de the hydration piece that she wasn't, real, she wasn't hydrating enough and she actually got really sick from hydration. She thought she was drinking enough, but dehydration can be really dangerous, um, especially if you're in the heat when exercising. Um, have a schedule and try to stick to the schedule the best that you can. 
use your spare moments. Uh, the 10 minute trick. So the 10 minute trick is basically, you know, it's recommended that we all get at least 60 minutes of physical activity in a day. And it doesn't have to be 60 minutes in a row. So you could go do 10 minutes, go for a 10 minute walk, do 10 minutes of calisthenics. But throughout the day, try to do that six times and you'll meet your 60 minutes. I think it's difficult for some people, especially working people, to find time to get to the gym or go out and exercise. So the 10 minute trick can be helpful there. I found this website that's kind of interesting um, to know kind of how many calories you burn when you are exercising. And it's a WebMD site. And basically what you can do is there's like the yoga. So you can type in the exercise on here and then um, pick the type of yoga that you did. <clears throat> so let's do a uh, hot yoga. There's what I used to do right there. And then you put in your body weight. So my body weight is 250 pounds. So if you put in your weight, and how long you would do it for. So I do it for an hour, then you calculate, gives you an approximation of how many calories you burn. And you can go in here and put any kind of, just type in different types of activities. So this is a, a, a neat website. WebMD is a good spot to go get some good information, but I'm kind of curious how many calories you, you burn in activities. That's a good, good uh, website to use. All right, that is basically the information that I wanted to cover tonight. Shirley, do you have any questions that you've run into already with your courses or anything I can help answer? Um, not that I can think of just yet. So one of the things I was meeting with um, Rachel, who's in here, who's my coach, um, that I've noticed with students in Fitness for Life is you're going to have some discussion questions that you need to do. And two parts... Um, it's a two-part assignment where you'll, you'll post an answer to the, to the discussion prompt, and then you also have to respond to another student um, to get full credit. So make sure when you go in and do discussion post, post that you answer the question, and then you also read somebody else's response and then respond to it to get full credit. Okay. And I can uh, send you a document. Um, that has that Rachel and Katie, our coaches, actually created. That's very helpful. That shows how to um, how to do a discussion post. So okay. If you want to, if you want to send me an email, that would probably be easier. Darren Nolan at Graduation Alliance. Okay. I can send you that document. It's it's helpful okay. because I know a lot of people that are just starting our program. Um, I was telling Rachel when I'm grading, I'm I'm noticing a lot of students are doing the part where they answer the discussion question, but they're not responding to another student. So they're only getting half credit for that assignment. Right. So just a heads up on that. Um, but uh, my contact numbers um, on the on the course, it should be, you can chat, message me. I work at a brick and mortar, which we start tomorrow during the day. But um, I right when I get home, I log in and start grading work and checking um, emails and such. Okay. You can send me an email if you have any questions. Okay. All right. Well, thanks again. It was nice meeting you and welcome to Graduation Alliance. Thank you. Hope to see you in a couple of weeks again. Yep. All right. Have a good night. You too. Good night.